The 2024-25 NFL season is about a week away. I'm doing NFL team betting previews, breaking down all 32 teams from a betting perspective. Make sure to check out the team previews I've already done on my page. In this video, we're talking the Detroit Lions. I have a couple future bets involved in this Lions team. I bet them over 10.5 regular season wins. I have a player award prop as well. I'll discuss in a few minutes. Uh, I was recently watching an old YouTube video I did. The video was a lesson on how to create your own NFL power ratings. The video was recorded before the 2021 NFL season started. In that video, I had the Detroit Lions rated as the worst team in the league. They finished 3-13-1 that season, but since that season, it's been a just complete upward trajectory. I'll link that video in the top right-hand corner now for anyone that wants to learn how to create your own point spreads week to week in the NFL. Lions are the most profitable team against the spread over the last three seasons. They have the best against the spread record of any team, 35-16 against the spread. They're coming off their second straight season where they went over their win total by more than two games. No team has overperformed expectations as much as the Lions have the last three seasons. This is all happening under the Dan Campbell era, Lions head coach. Uh, last season, they got their first division title in over 30 years, their first playoff win in 30 years. A lot to be excited about in Detroit for the first time in my adult life. Um, there's a saying, buy low, sell high. The Lions are definitely at their high point, and a lot of people are expecting them to regress. I'm just not one of them. I'm not even a huge Jared Goff fan either. Members of the Discord community are well aware of what I call the Jared Goff checklist. You bet against Goff anytime you can check off all three boxes. When he's on the road, when he's playing outdoors in bad weather, either rain or wind, and if he'll be under pressure or playing a top 10 pass rush. He's been terrible in these spots throughout his career, but this season, he won't be in many games where you can check off any of these boxes. Uh, there's really only two potential outdoor bad weather games he'll play. Amazingly, 13 of the Lions' 14 games are all played indoors. This is huge for Goff and the offense, playing indoors on a fast surface where they're at their best. Um, you know, it was a top 10 pass and rush offense last year and top five, depending on what metrics you go by. Uh, and because of that success, both Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown got rewarded with big contract extensions. No reason this offense shouldn't continue to be atop the league. Overall, I have the Lions playing a slightly tougher than league average strength of schedule. They only play three teams that I have rated inside the top 10. But again, they really luck out playing indoors all year. Um, they have an early season bye in week five, which for playoff caliber teams, you would prefer a later season bye week. But uh, all the key pieces are back on this offense. They swapped out guards uh, and probably have the best offensive line in the league. Four of their five starters are back. Two of them are legit pro bowlers. Only skill position player they lost was wide receiver Josh Reynolds. Lions will really need Jamison Williams to step up and play like the high first-round talent he was projected to be. Um, they need him to be that top outside threat opposite of St. Brown to take pressure off of him and uh, keep teams from double-teaming him. But Williams' numbers haven't been that great. He's ranking outside the top 60 in wideouts in multiple categories. He's 63rd in yards per route ran, 60-something in yak per reception, um, and he's dropped the fourth highest rate of targets. Uh, I do really like the tight end there, Laporta, but wide receiver depth does scare me. Um, the starters are solid, but they need to stay healthy. There's virtually no depth outside of the starters at wide out. Uh, and because of this, St. Brown is such a clear-cut number one option. I'm expecting a huge year for Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, production production wise but overall just usage as well offensive coordinator ben johnson has said how st brown will be the focal point of this offense which isn't a secret but i think if jameson williams does emerge as that other option this is going to boost st brown to the next level um, i bet ross st brown to win offensive player of the year at plus 2400 odds which at that price point makes me think he is flying under the radar a bit when you compare others to that similar price point. 
Uh, but the Lions, you know, they're not a one-dimensional offense. They're pretty balanced with a really good running game. They got Gibbs and Montgomery, first running back duo in history to have a thousand scrimmage yards and ten touchdowns each. Uh, that's also a credit to how good the offensive line is. But probably the biggest off-season move for the Lions has nothing to do with the players. But somehow they were able to keep offensive coordinator uh, Ben Johnson, who I have easily as top five, probably top three play caller in the league. Um, I thought for sure he was leaving Detroit for a head coaching job somewhere, but no clue how they convinced him to stay. Uh, he not only turned down several head coaching jobs, he didn't even interview for all of them. Um, I think he realizes there's something special with this team and they're close to uh, finishing what they started, but can't imagine he doesn't accept a head coaching job after this season, win or lose the big one. On the defensive side, the Lions didn't add much. They did add, uh, or they signed DJ Reader up front in the middle to the defensive line that features Aiden Hutchinson, who I really like. But Reader's coming off a significant quad injury. They also added defensive end Marcus Davenport, but I think he only played four games last year due to injury. The big weakness on this Lions team is defending the pass. They allowed the most explosive plays in the league. Explosive plays are defined by gaining 20 yards or more, and the Lions allowed 68 pass plays of 20-plus yards or more. They finished the season ranked 25th in EPA per play allowed per drop back and 31st in yards per pass attempt allowed. Uh, the Lions' defense especially struggled down the stretch in the final games, including playoffs. They were outgained in five of their last six games allowed opposing offenses to put up huge numbers. Somehow they won four of those games too. They did try to address the past defensive problem uh, by signing, drafting, and trading for new pieces. All in the secondary, they traded for Carlton Davis, who was coming off his worst season of his career, but I think a new team playing for a legit contender might reboot him. Um, I do think the secondary will be better. They have a good mix of old and young guys. They used two high draft picks on cornerbacks. They got Enos Rakeshaw, who had um, the highest rookie, one of the highest rookie preseason PFF grades at 80.4 in week one of the preseason. But uh, he did get hurt, I think, in practice and didn't play in the second and third game. Um, Terion Arnold, first-round pick from Alabama, who looks like he's going to step right in and play. A lot of new faces in the secondary, but if they can be a league average defensive backfield, that's a huge improvement from last season. I'd be shocked if this past defense doesn't finish anywhere close to where they did la uh, last season as like a bottom eight unit. They'll definitely be better. Uh, but I do understand why a lot of people expect this Lions team to regress. It seems like the perfect spot to fade them after how well they've played the past couple seasons and how they've kind of overperformed expectations. Um, I can't see any reason to doubt them or think they don't win at least 11 games, especially with such a comfortable schedule playing indoors all season where Goff is much more effective. Dan Campbell continues to make all the right decisions. Um, you know, he's giving his team those little edges over the course of a game that end up being the difference in those close games. The Lions have characteristics, uh, uh, characteristic traits of a team I really like. When you can go on the road and win tough games, it's a sign of a really good team in the NFL. Last season, Detroit went on the road, beat KC, Green Bay, Tampa Bay. Um, I think the window for the Lions is open as wide as it can get. Um, uh, as much as I do like them, I still think they are a tier below a real Super Bowl caliber contender of a team. But my bet on them is to win more than 10 and a half games. And I think that is extremely likely um, going into this season. I have the Lions power rated inside the top five. Um, I have them five points better than a league average team. Um, I like that the league is showcasing the Lions, too. It tells me they want the Lions to be good. They have two Monday night football games, two Sunday night football games, and two Thursday night games. Um, Lions are set up for a deep run if Goff and St. Brown can stay healthy. <clears throat> now, if you want access to all the bets I make this season, along with weekly power packet uh, that has my updated team and power ratings and game breakdowns, you can join the Betting Network Discord. Um... Uh, 
winning betting sports is hard. It's simple as that. Um, why do it alone when you can join a team to help you make more well-informed bets? The invite link to join the Discord is in the description of this video. You can join for free, but you'll get limited access, or you can become a pro member, which gives you full access to all the channels, features, and tools. I do charge $50 for 90 days. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next team preview breakdown.